problem 4.1-1. The problem statement reads, determine the maximum shear stress in the solid shaft. The diameter of the shaft is 1 inch. Assume the bearings between A and B and between C and D have no friction. Here's the shaft. We see four external torques applied. Here are the bearings between A and B and C and D. They have no friction and therefore are not contributing to the internal torques in the shaft. I'm going to begin by using the right hand rule to identify uh, my assigned convention for positive and negative torques. I've defined my positive x-axis as shown. If I use my right hand and put my thumb in the direction of the x-axis, my fingers show the direction, or point to the direction of a, what I'll call the positive torque, which in this case if we we're looking down on the shaft, positive would be counterclockwise. So that means the torque at A and D are both negative, and the torques at B and C are both positive. I'm going to now draw the internal torque diagram. Okay, I've drawn the horizontal and vertical axes for my internal torque diagram. And beginning at point A, we have a torque being applied 30 foot-pounds in the negative direction. So from A to B, the internal torque will be negative 30 foot-pounds. At point B, a positive 55 foot-pound torque is applied. We're going to see a jump from negative 30 foot-pounds up 55 foot-pounds. This will take us up to 25 foot-pounds. Then from B to C, we remain at a positive 25 foot-pounds. At point C, we see an additional 20 foot-pound torque being applied. It is in the positive direction, so we will see a jump up in our internal torque diagram from 25 to 45. From C to D, we remain at a constant 45 foot-pounds. At point D, we have a 45 foot-pound torque being applied in the negative direction. That's going to take our internal torque diagram back down to zero. Because we end at zero at D, we have confidence that we have drawn the diagram correctly. The equation for maximum shear stress in a shaft is the internal torque T times radius C divided by polar moment of inertia J. Because the diameter of our shaft does not change, C and J are constant along the entire length of the shaft. Therefore, our maximum shear stress will correspond to our maximum internal torque. And for the shear stress calculation, the direction of the torque doesn't matter. So we're really interested in the maximum magnitude of internal torque T. Now I said the direction of the torque does not matter for shear stress. That is true, but it will matter when we look at deflections in the next lesson. From our diagram, we see that the maximum internal torque occurs from C to D at a value of 45 foot-pounds. We will use that value in our equation for our maximum shear stress. I've written the equation for maximum shear stress. For T, I've input 45 foot-pounds. Notice, especially if you're not very familiar with the US customary units, we must have this value for torque in inch-pounds if we want our units to work out to the proper pounds per square inch, or kips per square inch unit for stress. Therefore, we need to convert feet to inches. So we need to multiply 45 foot-pounds by 12 inches per foot. The feet cancel out. We are left with inches and pounds in the entire equation. The value for C is the shaft radius. Note we are given shaft diameter as one inch, so we will take half of that for the radius. That is a common mistake students make in these problems, is plugging in a value for diameter instead of radius here. The polar moment of inertia for this solid shaft is pi over 2 times the radius 0 0.5 inches to the fourth power. This calculates to be a maximum shear stress of 2,750 pounds per square inch or 2.75 KSI. And we're done.